In today's video, we're taking you on a delicious journey through Negril, Jamaica to explore some of the best spots to eat on the island. From hidden gems to iconic beachfront favorites, we'll be tasting our way through the rich flavors and mouth-watering dishes that make Negril a true foodie's paradise. So whether you're craving fresh seafood, authentic Jamaican jerk, or something sweet, we've got you covered. So grab a seat, get ready to take some notes, and let's dive into the best eats Negril has to offer. glow so I have my notes hey guys welcome 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 back if you're new here I'm Melissa if you're a returning subscriber big up yourself thank you so much for rocking with us and guys thank you so much for helping us grow this year has been amazing but that's not what this video is, so I'm actually just gonna get right into the video. I have some notes about all of the different places that I ate at while I was in Jamaica for my 30th. Wow. Wow. Definitely not my 30th birthday, y'all. Oh my gosh. My 38th, it was a solo trip to Jamaica. And um, I want you guys to hear about all of the places that I ate because they were amazing, okay? So without further ado, let's get right into this video. Actually, no, let's pause. Can y'all hit that subscribe button, please? We had a goal of 20K subscribers and we're not yet there. So please just hit that subscribe button, do your girl a favor and leave us a thumbs up because this video is gonna be good you know it. Okay. All right. Now let's get into the video. So number one on the list is Flag City Seafood. Guys, they are number one on TripAdvisor for the best place to eat if you're visiting the grill. So what better way to start? It says restaurant, y'all, but it's the best restaurant, best place to eat without four walls because they're actually located on the beach of Negril. Two videos ago, you'll see that I shared where I walked up Seven Mile Beach, which was a short walk from my resort. Um, let's start with the things that I really, really loved at first, okay? I love that it was not overly done up, right? It was just a natural way to enjoy your meal. You had uh, wooden benches, um, there's coconut trees, there's um, of course a lot of flags representing all of the countries in the world. I think they have all the countries in the world. Either way, um, wasn't overly um, glamorous, but that's what I love. Now, there's music playing, the guys are friendly, okay? So I went there by myself and I didn't have to worry about safety. I didn't have to worry about someone hitting on me and I didn't have to worry about like someone taking advantage. So it's a very safe place for you to go for all of my women, especially my solo travelers. Now, the second thing that I really loved about this was that I was able to have a true sea to table experience. So the lobster, cause lobster was just on my radar, but you could get a ton of things you could get fresh snapper, you can get soup, rice and peas. There's a whole lot on the menu, but I specifically went there for fresh lobster. And to my surprise, the lobster was actually still in the ocean. They had it in this um, cage and it was sitting in the water. The guy walked right over, picked the crate out of the water. He went ahead and said, hey, why don't you go ahead and pick one? Now, I'm not vegan or anything, but I definitely felt bad. I felt bad because I'm like, oh my gosh, you're gonna be dinner tonight. And it took a while for him to get it out of there, but I was able to pick the lobster. They took the lobster, got it cleaned up and put it right on the, the grill. Now, when I say grill, I use that term loosely because like I said, this is not your fancy um, fair type of thing. This is really roots connected to the island type of experience and that's what I love. Um, and so they put it on the grill and as the lobster is cooking, um, I decided to get a coconut water. Now, I have seen videos where they say it's the best 
our sweetest coconut. That wasn't my experience. It was a young coconut and um, it was refreshing, but it wasn't the sweetest. And um, it didn't really have a jelly in it. So, oh, also I should note, I went there right after a hurricane. So it's very possible that all of the good coconuts fell off the tree, okay? So maybe when you do go, they'll have the really, really sweet coconuts. So the lobster got off the grill and you guys, when I tell you this lobster was so delicious, not overly seasoned, not overly done. It was just right. They paired it with some rice and peas and I was already stuffed from the day, so I didn't really eat much of the rice and peas. But when I say I devoured that lobster, I devoured it, okay? It was everything and more. Um, so to sum up Flag City Butter. Seafood, honestly, it's just such a cool oh, yeah. laid back experience and the oh, yeah. food that you're gonna get will be top tier. You know that the food is well prepared. You know that it's gonna be well seasoned and you know that you're going to have good, clean vibes. So restaurant number two is Ivan's, which is located at Catch a Fallen Star Hotel. Now, when I landed in Jamaica, instantly I was thinking about where I was gonna have my birthday dinner. And everyone recommended Ivan's, like everyone, okay? Every single person that I spoke to, my driver, the front desk staff, just random people mentioned if you're going for a fancy occasion or celebrating something, you want to go to Ivan. So Ivan's is located on the cliff side of Negril, which gives you an amazing view of the sunset. And um, when I walked in, guys, the staff was super polite. They were super kind and I didn't have reservations and they made space for me. Then the ambiance was just really beautiful. You had dimly lit light, color was vibrant, and the energy was just, I have arrived. That's what it gave. It gave, I'm a rich, you know what, and I have arrived. Now clear the way for me, give me my table overlooking the water, and let me eat and indulge in this beautiful environment. So that's what Ivan's gave me. Now, one of the things that I really enjoyed from the menu, which we started at the bar, was a soursop martini. Guys, it was 10 out of 10 would recommend, okay? Um, I even tried the mango martini after that, and because I had the soursop martini first, the mango was just, mm, it was meh. It was good, but it wasn't as good as the soursop martini. So that's my number one menu item for you to try. Um, second item on the menu that I really enjoyed was their soup. So they gave me, it's this very brothy um, chicken soup. So it didn't have any uh, potatoes or anything in it. And it was very delicious. It gave me puree pumpkin with the chicken stock, a little bit spicy, loved it. If you can order that, yes, go ahead and do it, okay? Really, really good. The third thing on the menu that I really enjoyed was the jerk lobster. Yes, you heard that again. I'm having a ton of lobster because that's what I went to Jamaica for, fresh seafood, okay? So uh, the jerk lobster was made to perfection yet again. And the spices were just so amazing. Like you could smell this, you could smell the ocean, you could smell the spices before you even put the lobster in your mouth. My mouth is watering right now how good it was, okay? But let's talk about the service. The service was amazing. Our waitress, she was also amazing. And um, she made the occasion feel very festive with her energy. And like I said, you know, I'm gonna rate them a 10 out of 10 because they made room for me though I didn't have reservations. They sang me happy birthday. They gave me the, one of the best seats in the house, okay? And I just really enjoyed the experience. If you get a chance, you have a special occasion or just wanna enjoy the vibes, you need to add Ivan's to your list, okay? I would also make sure that you schedule those reservations. Don't be like me. 
Schedule your reservations and plan ahead. Number three on the list is called Best in the West. And it's a popular local joint. You know, jerk chicken sizzling on the grill. You have your pot of soup. You have jerk pork. You have all of the fixings of a regular jerk spot. On a normal day, you go there, it's going to be packed with people, both tourists and locals alike, which is one of the things that I loved about that experience, is that it's not just a touristy place. A lot of the locals go there as well. And um, the food is very seasoned. The food is seasoned, which is all you can ask for. And it tastes good, okay? It tastes like my grandmother cooked the rice and peas. It tasted like my mother made the jerk pork or the curry goat. You could get anything there. Um, I didn't order seafood because, you know, they're known for their jerk. So I ordered jerk pork and I also ordered jerk chicken. And if you're wondering why I'm ordering so much food, it was my birthday and I went to Jamaica on an eat, pray, love trip. So... I ate, though I didn't eat at all. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I also got the soup, okay? So the soup was a chicken soup that had, it seemed like it had like little pasta pieces in it, like orzo, which shapes like rice. I didn't particularly care for that because when I'm having my Jamaican soup, I just want to have the chicken, the pumpkin, the dumpling, the spinners, that is. Um, maybe some yam or something, but I didn't like whatever those rice orzo grain things were. And again, they have different types of soups each day. So the day that I went, they had that soup. And while it tastes good, I wanted it to be the traditional Jamaican street soup that you'll find. But the food was good. The service was good. Um, It was very moderately priced. So I'm not going to say that. I think, how much did I spend there? I don't remember what I spent, so I'm not even going to put pricing. But um, they were good. So Best in the West, you got to check them out. And they're right on, uh, I think it's called Norman Manley Boulevard right on the strip in the grill. So yeah, easy to find. If you ask anyone where it is, they'll be able to point you to it. And it's, like I said, it's very crowded, especially at night because it is a popular spot to eat at. So let's move on to the next restaurant. All right, guys, so for restaurant number four, it's Miss Lily's, and you know that I couldn't leave out Miss Lily's, okay? Miss Lily's is located at Skylark Hotel, and it's one of my favorite restaurants for breakfast, and I love Miss Lily's because it gives me that traditional Jamaican restaurant feel, but with a modern twist, and what I mean by that is... um, To preface it, I love the movie Dance Hall Queen. And so Miss Lily's is very reminiscent of 90s dance hall. So that's the decor vibes that you get there, okay? Um, When you walk in, you'll see in the roof, it has the the men and women dancing. Um, You have the boom boxes behind the bar. You have the mural that shows the posters like in the 90s when people um, had to figure out what party was actually happening that weekend. Um, And so, yeah, I love that 90s element of it, but the food is also good. So let's start with the menu items that I love. Okay. So breakfast is a huge deal for me in terms of getting my Blue Mountain coffee. Blue Mountain coffee always hits. Okay. You can get it with condensed milk, which is how I order it because I like it sweet. You could add a little nutmeg, a little cinnamon to make it really good. Um, the second menu item that I really love from breakfast is the Jamaican breakfast spread. It comes with ackee and saltfish, callaloo, a banana bread, some plantains. It gives you the Jamaican breakfast, um, and it's very reasonably priced. Okay. So I ate just for me. Uh, with coffee juice, the Jamaican breakfast, and it was only $31. So that just gives you an idea of what the price was. The other thing that I have to have in the morning, because it's just so refreshing, is their pineapple ginger drink. 
And that is 10 out of 10 would recommend, okay? Now for lunch or dinner, um, I always go for a fish. I always go for either the steam fish or the fry fish, snapper that is, and theirs is really good. Um, I rated it like an eight and a half out of 10 because I've had some really, really good seafood in Jamaica. And while Miss Lily's is good, it's not at the 10 level yet. Okay. So bear that in mind when you do plan your trip. Um, but yeah, Miss Lily's is really a good option for somewhere that you're looking to just have a really good vibe. Um, you can also order from the beach. So you can just lounge on the beach and then order and they'll bring it over to you in your lounge chair. So that's also an option if you're looking for um, a more of an informal kind of way to experience the restaurant. Okay. All right. So restaurant number five is called Sweet Spot. And Sweet Spot is popular with the locals, okay? I did not see a lot of tourist people there. So if you're someone that's on an adventure to really want to experience the places that the locals do, then Sweet Spot is going to be it for you. I love that they have natural juices in the morning. So they had sorrel, they had pineapple ginger, they had soursop, they had all of the natural juices you could possibly order. And I ordered two because I wanted to try them. And like I said, they were both really, really good. So the menu items that I really love because it's the only thing that I ordered, <laughs> I was there for breakfast. So I ordered the stew chicken with dumpling, banana, um, and pumpkin breakfast. And then I ordered the salted mackerel. So these are two Jamaican breakfast staples that you will enjoy. And yes, if you're wondering why do people eat stew chicken in the morning, it's just a Jamaican thing. And don't knock it till you try it, okay? And I'm rating them a nine out of 10, a solid nine out of 10. Their food was just what I expected it to be, like your auntie and uncle just cooked breakfast for you and you're enjoying it. So all good and not overly seasoned. So the sweet spot is really an affordable option, okay? So when I tell you that I did not spend a lot of money for breakfast, I did not. I probably spent less than, I'd say less than 20 US dollars. I can't remember, but for those two meals and the two drinks, it was less than 20 US dollars. So it's a really affordable option that is really delicious. Lastly, this is going to be number six, but number six is a category for street food. You don't go to Jamaica without expecting a segment on street food, okay? So street food is always going to be a hit. I believed I stopped at three different street food vendors. Um, again, breakfast is important. So the first vendor that I wanna talk about is located close to the Negril Circle. So if you're staying on the Seven Mile Beach side, you go towards the Negril Circle and then you take the first left exit, okay? The first exit on your left and you'll see him on the right. So he's always there, okay? Um, I'll insert the video of me driving there so you can get an idea of where he's located. But he's the porridge and soup man and I really like his energy. This is my second time going to him. He basically has the best porridge and most unique set of porridge, okay? So while most porridge men will have a cornmeal porridge or a peanut porridge, he specifically has a mix of peanut cornmeal and oats, okay? Peanut, cornmeal, and oats part. So you know that is very rich, but it's also a nice taste, the three of them blended together. So I really enjoyed it. That porridge is a 10 out of 10. It's not overly sweet, not overly thick. It's just right. Now he also has soup, so chicken foot soup. I didn't get soup from him because it was early morning and I didn't feel for soup but his soup is also good. The next street vendor is located close to the Jungle Nightclub 
And um, actually, he's just passed Best in the West and close to Jungle Nightclub. And he had jerk chicken, jerk pork. I do find that he was a little pricey because I spent 20 US dollars on a half a pound of jerk chicken. And the jerk chicken was so good. So good. So it was worth it. But I realized half a pound was a little bit too much chicken. So I shared it with the one of the guys at the front desk. I was just like, I can't eat all of this. Please take some off of my hands. Um, but yeah, his jerk chicken was good. And last place. Now, when you're going to Negril, it's a two hour drive. So there are a lot of places that you can stop to indulge in different street foods. So I would urge you to plan ahead and talk to your driver so that you can stop either on your way to Negril or on your way to the airport. I decided to stop on my way to the airport. And so I stopped in this quaint little town. I can't remember the name of it, but it was just about 30 minutes outside of Negril. And it was early morning again, and I got a nice cup of chicken foot soup. He tells you where he's located in this video. So if you're interested in stopping, show it to your driver, save this video, because I'm going to tell you right now, that chicken foot soup was so delicious. 10 out of 10 would recommend. It was a perfect way to end my trip in Jamaica. From fresh seafood with a view to hidden gems serving up authentic Jamaican flavors, Negril truly has it all for food lovers. So I truly hope that you enjoyed this video where I'm sharing all about my foodie experience in Negril. And I hope that you save this video so you too can also experience it. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, but also hit that notification bell so that you know when we post more videos, just like this one. Also, before you head out, leave a comment down below and let me know which of these restaurants you would love to try, or if you even tried any of them, let me know which ones were your favorite. I would love to hear all about your restaurant experience with any of these five restaurants shared. Again, thank you so much for watching this video and we will catch you in the next one. Bye.